And that breaking news, we now have a photo of the would-be assassin of President Trump. There you have his picture there, 20-year-old Thomas Matthew Crooks. Again, that photo you're looking at right there, that is a picture of the suspected gunman. Again, uh, President Trump is doing fine, thank God, and uh, a man lost his life, a rally goer, died protecting his family as well as women nearby, and two other rally goers are still in the hospital fighting for their lives. You know, in a time of struggle and pain, all of us find strength through our faith, through the power of prayer. President Trump himself crediting God and God alone for protecting him yesterday. For more, I'm joined by the senior pastor of Grace Community Church at Auburn, Washington, Pastor Jesse Bradley. Pastor, uh, talk to me uh, about the, our faith. This is what we need to lean on during these trying times. That's right, Lydia. God is our refuge, strength, and ever-present help in trouble. And yesterday's violence was terrible. My kids asked me, Dad, what just happened? And I had to explain to them about the attempted assassination and the loss of lives. And then we had a family prayer time together. And I encourage anyone who's watching to pray, continually pray these three prayers. First, for protection. We need God's protection. Pray for all of our leaders. And even the Lord's Prayer, protect us from the evil one. Second, pray for peace. Now, we have a lot of worry right now. There's a lot of tension. There's even hatred. We need peace. Jesus is our peace. God doesn't run out of peace. Peace is relational. And that leads to the third prayer, God's presence. Our national motto is, in God we trust. That can't just be lip service. That can't just be going through the motions or checking a religious box. This is a relationship with God. We need God's presence in America today. And we can't do this all in our own strength. We need healing in our land. And God says, if you turn from your sins, you humble yourself, you seek God together, God's going to restore. God can rebuild out of the worst situations. God can, by his grace, bring hope. And Jesus doesn't run out of hope. So know today that Jesus is our good shepherd. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And it's time to lift up our eyes to the hills. This is a wake-up call for America. We need to seek God together. Should we pray for our enemies? Yes, Jesus on the cross, as he died for our sins, before his resurrection, he prayed, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they're doing. And we pray for everyone to turn to God. In Joel chapter 2, verse 12, God gives a clear word, even now, not down the road, not procrastination or excuses, even now, return to me with all your heart. And we never give up on people because God never gives up on people. Even on the cross, there was a criminal who put his trust in Jesus before his final breath. And Jesus said, today you will see me in paradise. So let's be part of the solution. Let's stand up with courage. Let's be united. Again, reject hopelessness choose God's hope. And there's no limits to what God can do. The story's not over, but we need to be intentional, prayerful. And just like the Bible says, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Love God with all your heart. It was Barabbas, right? That was up there on the cross and the next cross over to, to Jesus. There's, uh, we have only 30 seconds left. What is, what is your hope for our nation that was once under God? That's right. The hope is to return and rebuild. That's the message for the Israelites. And we see that they collaborate together. Haggai, Ezra, Nehemiah, return to the Lord. That's first relationship. And then rebuild with the strength God gives. Listen, there can be a great turnaround mm -hmm. in our land. Jesus will empower. He will lead, guide, and provide fresh vision from God. We need to run together with that. Pastor Jesse Bradley, thank you so much for those inspiring words. And we do indeed need to pray. Thank you. Thanks, Lydia. Well, do not be afraid.